Welcome to this week's Artist on Art. My name is Nada Milkovich, and I have the great pleasure of speaking with Robin Aronson, who is uh, the guest this week. She has a play. She's a director of the play at Cabrillo College right now called Black Snow. Um, it started November 2nd. Yes. So it's already played a couple times, but it's uh, going on this weekend. Yes, for the next two weekends. Excellent. And so um, it's, it's still not too late for y'all to go out and see this very interesting play. And there's a lot we, I want to talk about with uh, Robin today. First of all, Robin, um, how long have you been directing? I assistant directed my first play in 1991, and then I directed my first play in 1993. So it's been almost 20 years. Almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, you started here at Cabrillo with your skill classes, your assisting? Yeah, I woke up one morning. I was doing uh, community theater. I was also practicing. Um, I was a yoga teacher, and I was a massage therapist. but. Theater was always my first love. And I woke up one morning and I thought, I want to get an MFA in directing. And I got up, got dressed, went to the bagelry, and there was Wilma Chandler, who was Wilma Marcus at the time. And she looked at me and she said, hi, Robin, hey, would you like to assist and direct my play? And it was just one of those super serendipitous cosmic moments. And so I got to be an assistant director, and then I loved it so much. And I decided to go to graduate school, so I ended up leaving Santa Cruz for 10 years and getting a master's degree and a PhD, and um, yeah. And now you're back. And now I'm back, 10 years later. Never knew I would be coming back to Santa Cruz, but I was very fortunate to get a job at Cabrillo College. Well, welcome back. Thank you. I'm so glad that you're here, and I'm so glad Pro Proposition 30 passed. Woohoo! <laughs> Particularly for yeah, oh yeah. folks like you. Exactly. The new teacher just hired during That's right. budget contraction. Um, well, I've been at Cabrillo actually for 10 years, but I am the, 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 le the latest hire, oh, so my so Even job, after 10 years, you're still the right. first one to... No, we won't even say it. No, so, because I'm not going anywhere. That's right. <laughs> no, California did the right thing. I think so. They did. Um, so, so, Robin, where did you go when you went away? I went to the University of Arkansas for my master's degree. Wow, they you have, went to Arkansas. Yeah, I did. I moved to Arkansas right when Bill Clinton was getting elected. So all of a sudden it was spotlight on Arkansas. <laughs> and they have, actually have a fabulous theater program there. And I was really given a lot of wonderful opportunities. And then I went to the University of Oregon where I got my Ph.D. In, in 19, Eugene? Yeah, in Eugene. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to be outside of Santa Cruz, Eugene is like yeah. the spot. Yeah, and so was Fayetteville, Arkansas. Just, I love it there. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Is it as different as we think of it? Uh, well, actually, Fayetteville, it's a little Santa Cruz Enclave. in the midst of... Yeah. Um, Enclave. We had those in yeah. Indiana also. Yeah, yeah. Bloomington, yeah. IU, Indiana University was the, you know. Right. So... Uh, Robin, let's talk a little bit about the play. Um, it's, uh, it, well, first of all, how did it get started? It even, you know, mentioned as a possibility of doing. I was asked to direct a big cast contemporary comedy. And so I did some research and I found this play and it came in the mail two days before the, my proposal was due. And I started reading it and I, I just thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever read, and I, I couldn't even read it. I was just so excited. I just would read and, and stop reading and kind of pace around going like, who can I tell about this? So, and then I'd read a few more lines and be just, oh my God, oh God. And so I was just so happy to find such a wonderfully funny and deep and meaningful script, and I knew that it would uh, give actors a lot of opportunities because it's packed full of parts. So there's 18 actors in the cast, but there's about 80 roles. Right. Yeah. And plus, I heard something very interesting, that one of the parts you split in two. That's right. So you even added more to, mm -hmm. and, and would you mind, well, should we first talk about the play, or would you tell us a little bit about what got... Well, I'll tell you about the play a little bit. There you go. So um, the play is Black Snow by Mikhail Bulgakov. But it was a, it, which is, which was his novel. 
So, um, and it was adapted in 1993 into a, into a stage play by Keith Redden. So basically, um, Mikhail Bogakov was a Russian novelist and playwright who, in the period of between the late 20, 1920s and the late 1930s, was basically oppressed, persecuted, censored, s demolished in his efforts to get his plays produced. And he took all his pain of that experience and he wrote this fictionalized memoir called Dead Man's Memoir, in which the character is speaking from the dead, obvious, in a way. It's, it's like his memoir, but then he, you learn in the beginning that he's committed suicide. Oh. So, um, and it was basically, Bokakov took his experience working with Stanislavski, the renowned theater director and the person who is responsible for pretty much the majority of actor training that happens in in the United States, anyway, and um, the method. The method, yeah. So Stanislavski, he didn't, he never called it the method, but it became known as the method. And so, so Bogakov, between the government censors and working with Stanislavski, is very difficult for him to uh, get his work produced. So this play, Black Snow was uh, very shortly ran, right, in, in it was it was It was a novel. It was a novel. It was never a play. It was never a play. Yeah. So Bulgakov, his plays were things like um, The Day of the Turbans, Flight, he did a Moliere, he did a lot of plays, but they, it, from 1930 on, they never got produced. Only one got produced for seven performances before the censors cut them down. That's the one I'm remembering about him. Yeah, so it wasn't until the 1950s that Bulgakov's plays actually started getting found and discovered and produced again. Was it in Russia first or yeah, did it, it have to get out? It, um, they got out. They got out. Yeah, they got out. Mm -hmm. So, um, so he basically compressed his, you know, 10-year nightmare experience into a one-year funny novel, a fictionalized memoir, and then in 1993, Keith Redden read it and said, oh my God, this would make an incredible play, and turned it into a play, and we're the lucky people in Santa Cruz to be putting it on for the first time in this area. Wow. Yeah. That's really exciting. And yeah. what time are the shows? The shows are Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Mm -hmm. Next see. two weekends, Friday and Saturdays at 7.30 and Sunday matinee at 2. Excellent. At the Cabrillo yeah. College Black Box Theater. Which is at 6500 Soquel Drive in Aptos. And if you could visit cabrillovapa.com, you'll be able to see what the tickets uh, cost. And you probably want to buy your ticket, I would assume. Um, this is going to be a really well received play. Hopefully. <laughs> well, how was the first weekend? So far, so good. Yeah. I was thrilled, and we got a really good audience response. So excellent. So there's mm -hmm. laughing. You know, there was a lot of laughing on Sunday. Um, Saturday was a little quiet, and my, um, which is fine. It doesn't mean people aren't enjoying it. Sure. My experience in the theater, and I've never seen this not be the case is that opening night is just exuberant and the audience is super responsive and the cast is charged. And then the Saturday after opening is the weakest, lowest run, um, show of the run. Because the, uh, the actors are a little let down, for, um, things start happening, things start going wrong on stage. For some mysterious reason, the audience isn't as responsive. And so, and so you just have to get through that night and then the Sunday matinee performance I thought was gorgeous. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. And uh, the, the play, Black Snow, um, it is a comedy and it's a very large ensemble class. Did you say there's 18, 19? There's 18 people in the cast and about 80 roles. Okay. Not all speaking roles, but basically a lot of people coming and going as different characters. So some people could go on 10 times yes. as a different person. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and how is that for an actor? Like that? Oh, they love it. <laughs> they get they to put it. on different hats. Yeah, and, and there's super fast costume changes in this show. <laughs> so once once the curtain goes up, 
they are busy the entire time changing costumes. They're running. Yeah, and sometimes you actually hear them running. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a big note that I'm going to give them. You know, what's with the stampeding backstage? <laughs> it's adding a whole nother reality to yeah, it. Yeah, it is. You don't want to break the... It break the... Yeah, but it, it does. And, and that's one of those things where you, you, you do your best to control it and teach them how to run softly and everything, but... You know, what can I say? Robin Arison talking about her uh, new, she is the director of uh, the new play at Cabrillo's Black Box called Black Snow. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a Russian comedy um, that has, uh, I'm assuming, a lot of uh, maybe anti communist or communist barbs, or is there any politics in it at all? Uh, uh, there's barbs. Toward, well, it's a satire. Right. So they are. So and Bulgakov was satirizing his experience. So what's getting satirized are the government censors, the the ruthless critics who basically demolished him, but not really based on his art. They just had their own motives of they being... They had their own agenda. Exactly. They had their own agenda to be the mouthpiece for the political system at the time. For Stalin, exactly. Although Stalin was an advocate of Bulgakov, surprisingly. Yeah. Because he... Bulgakov... So he, he was having... In the late 20s, he was having some plays produced by the Moscow Art Theater, which is Stanislavski's theater, and a couple other theaters. And... But then the, um, the press... And the, the censors shut him down. And suddenly, Bulgakov, not only was, were his plays all of a sudden not being produced, but he was in debt to the theater companies to pay back his advances oh and to pay gosh. taxes on his advances and ex things like that. So he wrote a letter to the government, in, including, he sent out seven letters, including one to Stalin, basically saying, if, if I can't work here, please let me emigrate. But if you're not going to let me leave the country, at least give me a job, any job, because otherwise I'm facing destitution and death. And so he didn't get any responses except from Stalin, who actually telephoned him and then immediately gave him a job back at the Moscow Art Theater as an assistant director. So then suddenly Bogakov was working again, and so the Moscow Art Theater is now going to be producing one of his plays, but they rehearsed it for four years, and it was just a nightmare. It was just an absolute nightmare. Meanwhile, other plays are getting produced and shown, and they're being received, but um, not Bogakov's. And it was a horrible experience for him to have his play in rehearsals for four years, and then it finally shows, and it immediately got censored and, and banned. It's completely tragic. For somebody to be born as an artist, as a playwright, and not be able to see their plays mm -hmm, performed. Mm -hmm. I think that's like the, you know, it's like being a musician and not being able to hear. It's, right. it's, it's tragic. Yeah, and, and knowing you've created something beautiful, but n not only can you not hear it, but nobody else is going to hear it either. Right. I did want to talk about the split of the two characters, of the character. Yeah, yeah. So the, um, the Bogakov character is... Sergei Leontievich Maksudov. And the way the play is structured, he narrates his own experience. So the play starts and you see the playwright, and then he, he um, does an aside to the audience and he turns out and talks to the audience and says, perhaps I should explain. And he comes on stage and now the two, the two actors are playing the one role. So, so even though the, the script was written for one actor to live the, the experiences and then to turn out to the audience and say, do you believe what is happening here? And then the next thing that happened was this, and then to go back in. Um, so I s decided to split the one character into two roles. So there's the narrator, who also, he's not only narrating, he's also in it and experiencing it. And, and reacting. Then, and reacting, definitely. And then one actor plays the living Sergei. So um, Davis Banta plays the voice of the memoir, and um, Jerry Cruz plays the, the living in the moment uh, Sergei. Sergei. Yeah. Bokov. 
Yeah. Bulgakov. Well, the Bulgakov character, right. which is, yeah, Sergei right. Leontievich Maksudov. Maksudov. Yeah. <laughs> it's wonderful. Um, so you have 18 actors. Uh-huh. Uh, is this one of your biggest casts? In my life? Well, I mean, as an, a director. Um, this, is a, this is a good size cast. I've, I've directed bigger casts, but this, is, this has a nice size, yeah. It's uh, not too many. No, not too many. <laughs> no. So I like one... the challenge. I like the challenge of having a lot of actors to work with, and especially having them play on multiple roles. It's great. So Robin Aronson, we were talking before about uh, the director and as an artist, the medium or media being um, both uh, other people and an installation piece and audio and, and lighting. There's so many different elements to what you're creating mm -hmm. um, and that it, it's, it seems impossible that you would, you would have to collaborate. To create what you're mm -hmm. what you're talking about, and so how many people are you collaborating with on this play? Well, aside from the eighteen actors, there's the production team. So there's the set designer, the costume designer, props, lights, and sound. Those are the basic design production design elements. So the way it works is that you know, that the director comes up with a guiding artistic vision for the production which is otherwise known as the directorial concept. And then the designers go and create their own. And then there's production meetings where you talk about choices and you, you just, everybody makes sure that they're on the same page and it's still following that vision, that, that guiding artistic vision. And, um, and before you know it, the sets are being built and the lights are being, designed and the sound and the props and the costumes and it's a super creative process for everybody involved. And how long has the process been? I, well, I, we had um, not very long. Not long enough. <laughs> <laughs> I always is want more time. Is it, always it's that way, huh? Yeah, but no, actually now that it's opened and you see it on opening night and you think, okay, we were ready to open. I Good. wasn't sure, but we absolutely were ready to open. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. So a couple of months. Yeah, four nights a week, three-hour rehearsals. I'm trying to remember the uh, call-out for actors was... The auditions mm -hmm. were the end of August, the last August. week of August, and rehearsals started on September 4th. Wow, so it was mm -hmm. quick. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And it, does that follow the Cabrillo? Is, is Pretty much. It, yeah. Yeah. And, and you're teaching theater production? Uh, my, uh, my main gig at Cabrillo is to, I teach an online class called Appreciation of Theater Arts. It fulfills one of the gen general education requirements. So not only do theater people take it, but also a lot of non-theater people. And it's basically an everything you wanted to know about theater class. And it's very comprehensive and very interactive. And um, I re it serves its purpose in our community because it definitely, people, the students come away from that class truly having a new appreciation of theater and wanting to see shows. I get a lot of um, evaluations saying things like, I love theater now, my husband loves theater now, or we now know that we can go see plays, and, and thank you for opening that world to me. So. so do you feel like you're teaching perhaps uh, the language with which to um, be able to talk about theater and what for people to look, Definitely. especially in modern theater, such as what you're describing, mm -hmm. where there's these you know, non-traditional breaking the, the fourth wall, is that mm -hmm. what they say? And, yeah, um, well, that's good. that's gone back since the very well, beginning. Well, the Greeks, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the there's always been the, the breaking of the fourth wall right, and, right. And, and direct address to the audience. But um, what? So in the in the online class, not only do they see three shows and critique them, and they, I, they there's theater critique guidelines that they use. So the guidelines are set up to help them look and understand what they're seeing and to be able to identify who did what and was that a good choice in their opinion. So in that way they learn. They also learn, um, you know, there's, there's the whole section about the work of the playwright and then, and then they write their own plays and then they design their own plays. So they, not only do they write scripts, but they do set, costume, light, sound design for them. 
is that uh, a, sh a certain length of play or yeah it's a scene it's a scene yeah okay. it's it's basically a one or two page scene but you still have to have a beginning middle and end yes definitely and I, they uh, they learn about the basic climactic structure and so they learn about you know basic playwriting and we we know that in you know modern drama it doesn't always follow that super linear storytelling but but the story gets told anyway. I mean, we all want the story. That's that's what we're we there for. Yeah. I mean, we we want to be drawn in by the artistic, um, you know, imaginative artistry of the of the, the what's happening on stage, the production design. But mostly, we're there because we want to follow the characters and what they're going through and care about them. And yeah. I think we only have a few more minutes. Um, how is it teaching an online class? How are you experiencing that? Well, they dragged me kicking and screaming. I said I, would, I was the last person to ever de design, um, to teach an online class, and I was told, no, actually, you're the only person that can. So I developed the course myself in a way that made sense to me. And um, I like it. Good. Yeah. I, I'm really attracted to your class. Yeah. <laughs> no, it, it's really, yeah. it's become, a, it's, a, it's a gift to me because it's my little um, foothold in Cabrillo in the theater department. But um, I, it's, what's amazing is that, what I, and a lot of feedback that I get from the online class too is that the students feel like they are contributing way more than they would, a lot of them, in a face-to-face -face yeah. class. Because every week, everybody can read what they think about, because there's a whole discussion section where I post discussion topics, and that's where they read each other's work and respond to each other's work. So... Well, in a classical play, play class, teaching like a, on campus, um, you get chosen so many scenes that you get to watch, and then the hundred other people never get to see their work. You know, it's it, there's only a limited amount of time yeah. that, that it can be shared, and you're um, you're, you're showing what is probably one of the uh, really great aspects of online teaching and education. Mm -hmm. um, yes, for those people that don't raise their hand in class and have something to say, but they're kind of afraid of saying it, or any of those reasons. In the online class, everybody talks, everybody contributes, and it turns out to, I, I mean, I'm just, the, these discussion boards, these postings are just like this wealth of information. For instance, we do... Um, and there's an archive of it. Yeah. Yeah. So, for instance, they, we do character analysis of the streetcar named Desire characters. And by the time that posting is done, every single thing that could possibly be said about Stanley Kowalski and Blanche Dubois has been said. <laughs> and so it's not, and nothing that one person could have come up with right. on their own. Right, so. right, right. Well, it's been such a pleasure. Thank Robin you, Nada. Anderson, the new director, or the director, excuse me, of Black, right, Black Snow, and it's at the Cabrillo College Black Box. And uh, I wish you the best Thank for this you. weekend's performance. Thank you. Everybody's been wonderful. The cast and crew and the designers. It's been an incredibly wonderful experience, and I thank everybody. Thank and you. And I thank you. Yeah. All right. <laughs>